Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. You have to have dry wood in order to turn, right? Well, no. If you have to have dry wood, it's going to be costly, close in times of money and in time. You can figure a year per inch of thickness plus a year is a rule of thumb. It varies widely from that, but hey, what do you do? So dig out your chainsaw and talk to your friends and cut down trees. Well, okay. Well, it warps, right? What do you do? Well, one alternative is to turn it rough and then let it dry and then return it. Well, that is if you remember it and you get around to it again. This piece of ash I turned 12 years ago. I wonder when it will be dry. Okay. Or, like for this piece of chestnut, you can turn it to finish thickness and go ahead and sand it and be done with it. Well, but won't it warp? Well, yes. In fact, for this bowl, I hope it warps a lot. I may not get my wish. You'll see it on the lathe, but it's, it's wobbly, but maybe not quite as much as what I'd like. But yet, this is a nice bulk. has some interesting figure in it. Spalting with this black. And why did the spalting not go into this area here? Good question. Or, in this case, I think this is staining from the, from the bark. All in all, an interesting bowl that I hope warps a lot. So, let's turn it green to finish dimensions and let it warp. I received this balk of wet chestnut from a club wood raffle. It looks like it has been harvested and processed right. The end grain has been sealed and the wood is in a plastic trash bag. As I open the bag, it is kind of a slimy mess, typical for well-treated wood that has been in the bag for a couple of months. It is a variety of mold and bark staining, but I decide I don't want a bowl that deep, and I don't want to waste all that beautiful wood. At least, it is ugly now, but I have faith that it is beautiful inside. So I went to the bandsaw and sawed it in half. Now I can make two bowls from this chestnut. I put the two second block back in the plastic sack. I need to get back to it within a month. I also cut off the corners. Maybe I can make a ball from the corners. Then I drilled a quarter inch hole for a screw chuck. Now mounted to the lathe, I can start removing wood. The wood is heavy and off balance, so I cannot turn up the speed very much. I'm starting with my large bowl gouge, trying to find solid wood at the bottom, then cut up. This way I'm cutting side grain with a lot less bounce. Once I have a continuous cut, I can get serious about shaping. I want to emulate a form from a recent club demonstration. It is kind of like a walk from the top with a small base. The wall thickness is uniform for only the outer lip, near the center over the base. It is much thicker to retain a gradual curve on the interior. Since I'm turning green wood to that final thickness, this bowl will warp. Actually, I hope it warps a lot. Before I go too crazy with the shape, I need to cut a mounting tenon. Then finish the outside wood removal. Next, remove it from the screw chuck and remount it in the four jaw chuck on the tenon that I cut in the bottom. And hollow it with my large bowl gouge. With the live center in place, I like to hog out a lot of the wood before switching to a more gentle cut coming from the perimeter. Then remove more of the center core with the hogging cut before again switching to a more gentle cut to refine the interior shape. 
I am keeping the live center in place for as long as possible. I do not dare hog out without a live center keeping the bowl in its place. At this point, I'm not trying to maintain a consistent wall thickness. Instead, it is a gentle inside curve. I'm finished with this bowl for now. It is very wet. I can see the interesting effects from mold, spalting, and stain from the bark. I don't want to sand it now. It would only clog up the sandpaper. So the bowl goes into a brown paper shopping bag with no sealer. The bag will temper the drying environment. I will leave it in the bag for about a week while at least the surface moisture evaporates. It's time to clean out the pile of wood shavings from the shop. I love turning green wood, but not necessarily cleaning out the piles of shavings. Now to finish the bowl. Since the bowl has warped, the lathe turns into a mounting platform. I am not trying to turn it perfectly round. Instead, I want the warp. So now I have to do a lot of power sanding. Do I start with 220 grit and brag? No way! I'm actually starting with 60 grit and allowing the sanding to follow the warp. I keep the sander moving to reduce ridges and follow the warpage. I'm wearing my respirator though. I finish my sanding with 400 grit paper and a bit more by hand on the outer rim. Everything is finished now except for the foot. Yes, it is still wet, but should be dry enough to finish. I've mounted a domed faceplate to the lathe then a bit of old rotten sanding mat for a cushion. The bowl is held in place with the live center in the original divot from the center. Then with a small spindle gouge, refine the foot. Since I have a lot of wood in the foot, I'm hollowing up from the bottom a little more than I would otherwise. Finally sign and apply a soaking cut of walnut oil, wipe it off. Then I'm allowing it to dry a couple more days before buffing it to a nice shine. There's plenty of room in my showcase for green turned warped bowls. This one has a nice grain and interesting spalting and natural staining. Why wait for wood to dry? Turn it green. I still have the other half to turn. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video. Please wear your full face shield, but I hope you never have to thank me. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.